Okay, so we're basically only going to stroke the upper hull. Now, unlike a lot of tanks where you've just got a one piece upper hull that slips straight on, this is a multifaceted construction. There's many components that make up this. The instructions suggest to you that you just add on parts sequentially. So, those sides. Then we do some back deck, then we do another random piece, then some front, another bit of side. Then all of a sudden we'll build up the roof. Then we'll put the roof on, then we'll put on the back deck. Probably not a good idea. And experience tells us that fitting that many components together may lead to some fit issues. So instead of taking that approach, what we've done is we've identified the components that make up the upper hull. So we've got the sides. We've got the back deck. We've made up the roof as well. And there's some other plates, the front plate. That gun structure and some of the other side structure. And we're going to approach this by building up everything that makes up that, oh, that the superstructure in sort of one hit. Instead of placing these components on like so, and they may, they may absolutely fit great out of the box. I don't know, but experience tells me that I want to have some like wiggle room that if something goes wrong with fit, I can address it immediately rather than have uh, pieces that have been lock solid and are out of uh, out of kilter. So if I've got alignment issues, I don't want to find out later on. I want to deal with them in one go. Uh, the other point that we need to know as well, the way that these components fit is that they have a beveled edge on them and it's crucial that you clean these up or else you're going to get gaps and fit issues right from the off so make sure you clean off these bevels another point is that we have to be pretty fastidious and tidy with our construction the reason being this is not a you can tell it's a we pointed out all the details all these bolts all these armor plates are bolted on they've got they've gone and depicted all the bolt detail if we are a little bit sloppy careless with our construction we may well lose this bolt detail and it will be difficult to replace not impossible but difficult you can see i've already placed on this part here again using a technique of running cement in through the back now i've looked ahead and also we need to drill out some parts on this um, rear deck i'll just point out as well we are building up everything i just want to get the main superstructure part ready so i can check fit and alignment so there's the back deck there it's got um you know all these ancillaries on and these two plates here i don't need to really worry about that i can fit them on later but i do want to get a few things done i want to draw these holes which is well, relatively, obviously, is very simple to do. I will start a few of them. Just uh, make sure you do get the, the right ones. There is so many. And we use a pin vise to take out the holes. First of all, check your orientation and check that you are drilling out the right holes. They've got varying diameters, but um, I'll show you how I get around that as well. So we'll drill that one there, which is that one. It says it's 0.8 millimeter. I don't know which drill bit I've got inside here. It's, uh, it's bigger than a 0.5. Um, the one that's 1.1 millimeter here, I'm just showing this outside edge. Make sure you clean up these edges here just by using, I just rub my thumb over the top. But if you need to make one wider, of course, you could use a 1.1 millimeter drill bit or simply take your scalpel and just widen it like so. And you can do this obviously 
with all these holes if you're having any problems fitting those parts. The other thing that we're going to do is because this part will get cemented on is we're going to deal with uh, this area here. We've got a photo etch grill that goes on top. We're going to cement that on but as you can see the underneath is totally empty and uh, there can be a case where you get light underneath the mold. So as this is placed on here, and if you've got light inside the mold, you can, you've got that see-through effect. So we're gonna take care of that. That's gonna be really simple. I'm gonna show you how to do that now. Okay, I'm using some play paper, which is just very fine styrene. What we need to use is we can actually even use paper card uh, to some extent, but or styrene sheet, but I've got this uh, lying around. It is very easy to work with. We're going to just cut out a little section, like so. It's not meant to be perfect by any means. Let's get this out of the way. Let's have a look at our back deck and just measure it up roughly. So we just need to cut. About there as well. So we need to be the exact size because of what we're doing with it. Oh, we need to make sure that it doesn't impinge on anything when we fit this deck on. So we've got the cover for there. You can see it's white on that side. We don't want it white. Easiest way to do this is, well, the laziest way to do it, let's put it that way, is with our Sharpie type marker. So I'm just going to colour this in black. with anything that we do later on. All we need to do is make sure it's black. Why don't they make black styrene card? Kind of handy, wouldn't it? Nah, it doesn't really matter. Bit more. Okay, I think that corner there. Check this. It's fine. Let's just get our glue and just apply it to the rear part of here. takes on one go, line this up, press it on, job done. Now, instead of using this to build up all these plates, instead we're going to use this plastic weld um, it's it may well be the same as this but it, it isn't it's got different properties um, and I think this was a predecessor to the extra thin glues that were quite common now you know it's my extra thins etc uh, this one does not come with an applicator brush so instead we use uh, a paintbrush um, it's a hot action glue um, but it does um, because you can hold more on the paintbrush it's a bigger bottle um, you can really wick it through the joins quite quickly so uh, what we want to do is check all of our parts we've dry fitted them previously 
in order for the glue to work, we place the parts. And dry fit it and then run the glue down the gap. Important thing to note is don't have your fingers on a point of contact with where the the uh, the glue will go or else you're just going to get the glue to come through you've got a big fingerprint through there not a problem with flat surfaces however we've got all these bolts here and uh, we don't want to tighten it up we want a nice neat tight construction so uh, let's get on with that by first of all opening up the glue dip the brush if you haven't got a, a brush dedicated to the to the plastic weld uh, get one and just use it for the plastic weld let's place this into position all we need to do is hold it a little bit difficult to show you but I need to get this in alignment just like so check underneath got a little issue there need to move this a bit there it is I'm just going to reinforce that joint while we moved it it does work pretty fast but the uh, the grip is very strong it's very clean See there's no residue whatsoever underneath. Let's just push fit that in a little bit firmer. I'm gonna get a bit of gunk come out, but it's alright, it's underneath the fender, we don't, we don't see any of that. Let's do this plate next. Same thing again, offer it into position on the model. I have got these location tabs. Well, my finger's on the join so I need to be careful. I have to just do the rear first and then I'll do the back. Just be very careful there. Need a little bit of glue to reinforce that joint there. Push it together. Bot fat in. Check underneath. Okay, we've still got to do that, but again, more glue, push it in, just light touch, doesn't need much. Next part we'll put on is, oh, where'd that go? This, um, this component makes it the side armor here. I think it goes on like so. But I want to check, uh, I want to just check something else. This one might be a good candidate. Yes, it is. Let's, let's go for this one next. So now we're attaching that joint there. That joint, we want to make sure that the dry fit is really tight and nice. So I don't have any issues. Same procedure again. Hold it in place. And then you can actually as well. When you lose when you use this glue, you can actually use it like what welders do. You can just tack a few places prior to running the main bond. Make sure that all your gluing is done internally and then you can have a nice neat construction and um, you can see that nice tight joint there. There's a small gap, hairline gap there but nothing to worry about. Now I 
work to this front plate as well. This has got a specific orientation in that I believe it goes like so. So for this part here, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna use the normal cement initially, just so I've got a bit more working time on this join here. together first. There's a little bit more up down the back. Now to check the shape of it or the profile. Now we'll place it up here and just check fit against that's uh, what there is. It's a very, very good fit. Very good fit. It's got this lip here. In this case, again, because we haven't got that butt joint, we'll use uh, the normal cement. Let's just call it that for now. And that'll tackle that in place. Careful as well, don't load too much on the brush. If you drop it on the model, it really eats into the plastic. But um, that's looking pretty tight. I'll just press these together a bit more. Now, what we need to do, because I made this up, obviously it was for a reason, and that is, now I can check, check fit these joints here. And I can already see that I need to pull out this sidewall a little bit. It's not bad. That side there is pretty tight. And this side's not too bad either. Probably just a little bit of light sanding here to um, tie that up. The roof, I don't need to fit this on at the moment. I just needed this to check. However, I am gonna put on the back deck and the other components to make sure everything's level and correct. This part here, it sort of floats over there at the moment. We need to make sure that the these side these side um, armor plates as well are perfectly in alignment. This cover for the gun slots in here. This will need to get. Let's get that in <laughs> the correct way. Down that part will need to get cemented in at this stage as well. But again, very good tight fit. So let me just build up the other parts and I'll be back. I'm just going to show you to be aware of, uh, of this piece here, which is the which is basically the front mount leather. The fit again is perfect. Just be aware that this key actually gets you, has to be placed within that plate there. So you've got a button joint on this plate and this, and this one is a key joint right deep inside there 
just be aware of that, just uh, regarding how you glue it all together. And uh, when you do, it looks absolutely perfect. So I had some of the Pioneer tools on this back deck. Just point out some things as well. If you try and, uh, if you fix them just on the location points that were drilled out, uh, you're gonna have a bit of an advantage when it comes to painting. If we can somehow illustrate that in that, even though they're fixed on, we'll be able to get masks in between the tools like so while we're painting it um, with the tools they're pretty good they're pretty well detailed just be aware that we tidied them up properly which uh, the easiest way i find to do this obviously we pair off the uh, Pin marks, and I tend to use just my scalpel blade. If I can find my knife, that is, to uh, do the tidy up. And uh, I'll just try and show you that. Basically, there's a seam line just there, and I just scratch it off. If you take your time to clean up these parts, will pay off when it comes to the painting and also avoids any criticism from your fellow modelers for not properly cleaning, cleaning up the parts so don't really you can use a probably sanding stick but I find this works the best way just continue on like that. Okay, let's get this uh, back deck on. We've had it on the Pioneer tools. Again, I'll use the, uh, let's just call it the normal glue. Extra thin. Just for these parts here. Because we've got that little bit more working time. These butt joint against here. Hold them firm. On some more cement down the back to increase the strength of the joint. Whenever you do this as well, it does actually soften it so you can actually lose a bit of purchase. But all we're doing here is trialing the fit here and uh, from the way that went in there. It looks pretty sweet. I'm very confident about that actually. It's a very nice neat drawing. Just need to press down a little bit more on here. And uh, yeah, that's sweet, it's good to go. There's a little, we're gonna have to do a bit of sanding and tidying up here. This joint here looks a little bit like we need to do a bit of work here with this roof, right there. But otherwise, looking uh, pretty good. So just leave that dry fit there, and we'll, then we'll know that the angle on here is set. And then uh, what we'll do? I should actually take that off. That'll be fine. Just going to work on fitting the roof, prior to that back deck. That is actually as the instructions 